Ardell Territory, in this small provincial estate in the middle of nowhere, a baby was born. After delivering the baby, the elderly midwife remarked that the patient had been blessed by the gods. A baby boy is born and he looks a lot like his father, the landlord. The mother gave her son the name Ruin. She hopes that this boy, Ruin Ardell, will be the light of this world in the future. Ever since he was a child, Ruin Ardell hasn't stood out for anything. But one day, while reading a book, the boy overheard a conversation between his father and Uncle Beggins. Hearing that the uncle was going to go get some good seafood, the child turned to him. Putting the book on the floor, Ruin asked the man not to go to the street by the southern mountain. The thing was, there had been a strange flow of manna there not long ago. With a puzzled look at the young gentleman's father, Beggins asked what this could mean. The next day, when it was late evening, rain clouds thickened in the sky and a thunderstorm began. When Lord Ardell opened the door of the mansion, he saw Beggins running in the pouring rain. Asking the man to hurry into the house, he said he was beginning to worry that he was late. Running inside, Beggins apologized, explaining that he had taken the longer route on his way back. He managed to avoid trouble by listening to the young master's advice. Scratching the back of his head, the mustachioed man added that because of Ruin's words yesterday, he didn't go through the street by the South Mountain. And now he learned that there had been an attack by a beast of men. Everyone who was there was in mortal danger. But thanks to the young master, Beggins was not among them. Looking at the door leading to Ruin's room, the mustachioed man asked if it was possible that this boy could be able to sense the manna hovering in the air. Sadly, Lord Ardell had remarked that it was hard to judge that for now. But if his son really can sense mana, he will be Ardell's future. From that day on, Ruin's talent for magic grew stronger and stronger. He could sense mana at the age of six, and at seven he was able to manifest it. And when the boy turned ten, he surpassed countless children from prestigious families to enter the Ignite Magic Academy, the best magic academy in the Radian Kingdom. Ruin Ardell was the best among the applicants and was enrolled in the academy as the most outstanding applicant. What's more, this guy has been labeled a genius. This attitude somewhat weighed on the boy, but he comforted himself with the thought that his name would raise the status of the family. However, there is no way to say that he ultimately succeeded in this. On the first day of the start of class, the teacher asked Ruin to demonstrate the skills of the best among the enrollees. And that's when it became clear that this guy was far from the best, or even the second best. On the first test, something went wrong. Eventually, it turned out that the boy had a congenital mana release disorder. He simply lacked the ability to release magic even a meter away from his body. For a mage, Ruin Ardell's body was literally the worst. It didn't take long for the others to recognize the guy's ignorant background and lack of talent for magic. So, as expected, the other disciples' attitude towards Ruin quickly changed from admiration to contempt. The same day after failing the first test, the boy accidentally bumped into a bulky man walking by. Frightened, one of the students ran up to his friend and asked if he was okay. After all, he had just had the misfortune of touching a handicapped person. What if he became one? Shaking off his shoulder, the bulky man laughed and remarked that he should wash up soon. A man incapable of using magic. A defective person who is not even able to conjure in a magic academy. To the envious people, Ruin's current status was the highest pleasure they could get. So ever since then, they haven't neglected to punch that kid in the face. Whenever something like this happened, Ruin would go to the backyard of the academy and cry unnoticed by everyone. The boy didn't know what would happen to him. Would he even be able to become a magician? Ruin Ardell, the man who entered the academy with the best grades. More promising than anyone. More diligent than anyone. But because of that damn curse, the genius was handicapped by magic. The other students began to despise the guy, and the teacher simply wasn't taken seriously. And that's how the story of the once best entering Ignite Academy student ended. Or to be more accurate, Ruin himself thought that's how it ended. All because he couldn't even imagine what would happen to him next. There is one truth the lad didn't know at the time. In the depths of despair, there is always room for a miracle. Player artifact activated. The status window has been unlocked. The player artifact has been activated. Hearing those strange words, Ruin felt as if he was falling somewhere. Opening his eyes, the boy tried to realize where he was. He felt as if he were deep underwater. Suddenly, a system window appeared in front of the guy's face, stating that he was the incarnation of Drac, the destroyer of worlds. While Ruin was trying to figure out what this nonsense was and who Drac was, an unknown creature in the mage's robes appeared in front of him. The first thing the guy thought was that he was dreaming the whole thing. But as he gazed, he realized it was too real for a dream. As Ruin looked closer at the unknown creature's lips, he noticed that it seemed to be trying to tell him something. At the same moment, the boy felt an inexplicable surge of strength. A few hours earlier, Ignite Academy's training ground, 
Next to pass the test of the combat magic professor, Heidel summoned Ruin Ardell. As explained earlier, the student only needs to create a fireball and hit a target with it. Fireball is a magic that any academy student should be able to handle with flying colors. But for someone who can't use magic, it's an almost impossible task. Will Ruin succeed this time? Without letting the boy think it over well, Professor Heidel told him to get started sooner rather than later. Starting to concentrate mana in his right hand, Ruin decided that he shouldn't give up after all. Maybe he would succeed this time. Trying to form a fireball in his hand, the boy was going to accomplish this task at all costs. And now, it seemed like he was getting the hang of it. The guy materialized a giant-sized fireball in his hand in a matter of seconds. Watching this, the classmates couldn't believe that Ruin had managed to create a ball of such a large size. Could a person really have such a large amount of mana? Without taking his eyes off his student either, Professor Heidel continued to stand silently looking at him. So far, everything was going according to plan. Ruin was confident that if he continued like this, he would definitely be able to launch the fireball at the target. But suddenly, the same thing happened as it had all the previous times the boy had tried to activate any spell. As much as the guy wanted to throw the fireball at the target, he just couldn't do it. His hand continued to burn, but the spell didn't come out. Ruin soon felt sick to his stomach and had to spit out his lunch on the grass. Wiping his lips, the boy explained to the teacher that there was nothing he could do about it. Then, trying to encourage his student, Professor Heidel told him to rather release the fireball at the target. However, no matter how much Ruin tried to do so, the spell simply wouldn't leave his hand. Realizing that the boy still wouldn't be able to pass this test, the professor reminded him that he was already in the graduating class. If Ruin was still unable to perform ordinary magic such as fireball, he would simply fail the final exam. Now the guy was finally convinced that he was destined to fail and would definitely not be able to graduate from the academy. Clenching his fist, Ruin apologized to his teacher and promised that he would practice more. In this practical shooting test, students must create 10 fireballs and hit the target multiple times. Ruin Ardell, in turn, is unable to load even one such ball into the target. With such successes, the boy can't even expect to be a third-rate mage. Classmates have long called this guy the Academy's main dumbass. No one understands why he's still a student here. Because the top enrollee was the scion of a nobleman from the provinces, peers from more prestigious families became jealous of Ruin and felt inferior. This was also the reason for the hostility. The boy can withstand the taunts of his classmates, but the reality that robs him of hope begins to destroy him from the inside out. The curse is the only thing holding him back for six years. And while Ruin had been holding up pretty well all this time, trying to fight off the mana release disorder, he was now involuntarily beginning to wonder how much longer he would be able to hold out. A few days later, the corridor of the academy. The freshman entrance exam just took place. Oh, who's that? Is it Ruin's dumbass? Suddenly came the mocking voice of one of his classmates. Laughing, Ben Folt remarked that it was time for this guy to pack his bags. It was a wonder he wasn't embarrassed to show his face here at all, being such a scumbag. Waving his hands, the golden-haired bully asked the boy if he knew what the juniors called him. Dumbass Ruin was his nickname among the freshmen. Because of Ruin, the graduating class is not a role model. So why don't you just go back to your province? Agreeing with his friend, the thug standing next to him said that usually, if a person was blessed by nature with skills, he was at least born into a rich family. But the trouble was that Ardell's name was only heard when Ruin entered the academy. Smirking, Ben Folt told his buddy that his father had said that the Ardell family were just assholes acting arrogant, even though they had nothing. So the bully immediately realized the low level of this lousy family. Ben Folt's monologue was interrupted by a fist that came out of nowhere and suddenly flew into his face. Abruptly turning around, Ruin ran up to the golden-haired bully and smashed his fist into his face with great force. Looking at his classmate with hatred, the boy asked what it was he had said about his father. Trying to stop the blood flowing from his shattered nose, Ben Folt screamed how the bastard even dared to hit him. However, Ruin only explained to the bully about knowing when to stop. Who was he to say anything about Ruin's father and his family? Determined to stand up for his friend, the thug attacked the boy, asking if he realized who he was up against. But this big man's attack was quickly overwhelmed. Taking a step forward, Ruin dodged his opponent's blow and counterattacked him with a fist to the chest. In terrible pain, the classmate grasped his chest with his hands and fell to his knees right in front of the boy. 
Ruin only needed to land one blow to knock out the big guy. And while the lad stood looking at the defeated foe, Ben Folt's angry voice was heard. Cheeky bastards, how dare you hit me? The golden-haired bully shouted in anger, activating a huge ball of lightning above his head. Ruin hadn't expected such a turn of events. He never thought that his classmate would dare to use battle magic in the academy. Didn't he care that he might be expelled? As expected, Ben Folt wasn't just bluffing. He actually released a spell at Ruin with the intent to kill him. Looking at the ball of lightning flying into his face, the guy realized that he couldn't even move out of fear. Noticing what was happening, Professor Heidel ran to the boy's aid, shouting to the students to stop immediately. But it was too late. Ruin had taken the ball lightning strike with his chest. Trying to cover his face with his hand, the boy realized that his end had come. Not a single person is destined to survive a lightning ball strike. The very next second, the boy appeared before an unknown being in the robes of a mage, and the system reported that he was the incarnation of Drac, the destroyer of worlds. Status window unlocked, player artifact activated. Still not understanding what was even going on here, the guy heard the unknown creature trying to say something. That's when Ruin Ardell heard his name. Realizing that someone was calling him, the boy began to open his eyes. In front of him stood Helen, a high-class healer and infirmary worker at Ignite Academy. Remembering what had recently happened to him, the boy woke up almost immediately. After getting out of bed, he asked the nurse where he was now. Helen in turn told him that he was in the restroom and then asked the student not to get up. Taking his head, Ruin said he was fine and could sit down. But what happened? What was that creature? The vision seemed so real to the boy. Glancing at the healer, the boy wondered how long he had been lying there. Wincing that he'd been in the break room for almost a day now, Helen mused that he was very lucky nothing worse had happened. God had taken care of it, no other way. And when Ruin asked if he was all right now, the woman explained that there were a few more tests left to check, but the student looked pretty good for someone who had taken a direct hit from a balloon. The boy has no wounds, no burns, and even his organs are intact. The healer has never seen anything like this before. Looking at his hand, Ruin tried to understand how this was even possible. A ball of lightning is a terrifying magic that burns the body in seconds, and the guy took a direct hit and survived. So why is he perfectly fine? Professor Heidel, who had entered the common room, interrupted his students' musings. Guessing that the teacher wanted to talk to the student, Helen said that it was time for her to go on analyzing the results, then asked the boy to keep quiet if anything was bothering him. Left alone with his apprentice, Heidel asked how he was feeling. When he heard that the boy was fine, the professor told him that the professor's council was meeting about the incident. First of all, the man announced that Ben Folt would be expelled, using battle magic with the intent to kill, spreading false rumors about the head of the Ardell family, and treating and bullying Ruin unfairly. All of the above actions were taken into account in the verdict. After listening to the teacher, Ruin lowered his gaze and recalled that he had hit Ben too. And of course, this guy will be punished too. Given the circumstances, he'll be doing volunteer work for a month. In addition to everything previously said, Professor Heidel decided to ask his student something. Does he possess an artifact? A legendary weapon left behind by ancient mages with limitless mana? Ruin scratched his head, surprised at the question, and replied that of course he didn't have anything like that. If the boy had something similar, he wouldn't have been bullied like that. After thinking about it for a while, the professor said that, given the value and rarity of such an artifact, the head of the Ardell family would have used it for his own people rather than giving it to his son. Not understanding what the question was about, Ruin looked up and asked the teacher if he was even asking about it. In response, Professor Heidel stood for a while longer and looked thoughtfully at the boy. The teacher then explained that he was almost certain that before the student was struck by the lightning ball, a red light surrounded his body. It was as if a high-rank artifact had protected him reflecting Ben's magic. However, as expected, Ruin had no idea what artifact he was even talking about. The only thing the guy could assume was that it had something to do with that weird dream. Deciding not to tell his teacher about his recent dream, Ruin explained that even though he didn't understand what had happened, he was sure he didn't possess any artifact. Seeing that this boy really didn't know anything about what had happened, the professor didn't question him further and advised him to get a good rest. I wonder what that man is thinking right now. Left to himself in the restroom, Ruin began to recall that indistinguishable dream from reality. That strange voice spoke of some artifact of Drac, destroyer of worlds. Also, besides that creature calling the guy a player, it seemed to be saying something else. Status window, muttered the boy, remembering the words of that unknown creature.
At the same moment, as soon as the healer entered the room, a strange blue system window appeared in front of Ruin. Noticing the student's frightened face, Helen asked if he was all right. The boy, in turn, pointed his finger at the strange blue thing in front of him and asked the woman if she could see it. Looking worriedly at the boy, the nurse asked what he was talking about. There's nothing here. That's when Ruin realized that Helen really couldn't see that status window. That meant that only he could see this thing. Ruin Ardell, the incarnation of Drac, destroyer of worlds. As a result of his quest for limitless power, the mage Draca died with his world. Deprived from birth of the ability to release mana, Drac's source of power was physical strength. Drac's artifact invokes a status window and infinitely increases the wielder's power during quests, realizing that if he continued to insist, he would probably be considered schizophrenic. Ruin decided to make an excuse first. He scratched his head and asked the nurse to ignore it, explaining that he was probably just imagining things. Helen laughed sarcastically, but it wasn't funny at all. Then, showing the student some papers, the woman told him that his tests were completely normal, so he could go back to the dormitory. Thanking the nurse, Ruin said he would. So, today, Ruin Ardell survived a lightning ball strike without consequence, met a man with a red eye in an alternate dimension, and got a status window. In that window, it was written that the boy was the incarnation of a certain Drac. Is it possible that the artifact of a mage named Draca was given to this particular guy? Arriving at the Academy's training ground in the evening, Ruin saw another strange window suddenly appear in front of him. The system suggested that the guy perform a repetitive body training task. Since Ruin has become a player associated with Draca, the destroyer of worlds, he needs to prepare his body for the increased power through training. The assignment was that the boy had to make a hundred punches with his fist, a hundred with his foot, and a hundred with his leg from the turn. It's all about physical strength. What's more, even the reward for completing a task adds ten strength points. As he prepared to try out the system, Ruin tried to figure out how all these skills could help a mage like him. Exhaling, the boy still decided to try it first. This was no time to hesitate anyway. As soon as the boy swung his arm, the task window showed that he had 99 fist strikes left to make. Immediately after the next blow, the figure changed again. Noticing that the number was growing, Ruin thought that at this rate, he would quickly reach his goal. However, after the next airstrike, for some reason, the number didn't change. Thoughtfully looking at the task window, the guy guessed that a hit wouldn't count if there was even the slightest error in its execution. In that case, the boy made the decision to go through the training properly. Several hours later, still on the training ground, a very tired Ruin is trying to catch his breath from the long training session. He was finally finished. To be honest, the boy had no idea it would be so difficult. Be that as it may, he managed to fulfill all the terms of the assignment. Just as the guy was about to leave to go back to his dorm, the system notified him that he was rewarded with 10 strength points and a new unlocked skill. In that same instant, Ruin sensed something unusual. Looking down at his hand, the boy felt something faintly circulating in his blood. It was something even more fundamental than mana. Yes, that's right. Now Ruin feels that he has become truly stronger. Not wanting to stand idle for long, the guy immediately ran to test his new power. Taking a tentative swipe of his arm, the boy felt the air parting with immense power. The force entering the magic became much more powerful. The speed, the air resistance, the destructive power. Everything feels completely different. Ruin's foundational strength had increased, and so after making sure of that, the guy wanted to check out the second reward. Lowering his hand, he called up the status window. The Power Circle Passive skill replaces mana with physical strength. Mana circles will be replaced by force circles. From now on, all magic and all movements will be under the influence of the player's physical power. Of the above, Ruin was interested in the fact that mana circles would be replaced by power circles. That means his mom will be replaced by physical force. All those who feel and study mana have a circle around their heart. The mana circle plays an important role in releasing and amplifying mana. The number of these circles increases depending on the mana accumulated and the amount the magician can control. Ruin now has four circles of mana. That's more than is common for people his age. But because of the mana release disorder, it doesn't matter. Deciding to check his mana circle count again, the guy noticed something unusual. The mana circles had indeed disappeared. In that case, the insanely circulating force instead is power circles. Ruin knew nothing about mages without mana circles. He had never even heard of such people. 
If these new circles were not a full-fledged replacement, what would become of the boy in the future? In that case, he could forget about his life as a mage. After gathering his thoughts, Ruin realized that it was too early to give in to his decadent mood. It would be a good idea to put his new power to the test first. Extending his hand forward, the guy summoned a fireball. The spell appeared almost instantly. But how is that possible? Not only did the fireball appear literally in an instant, but its power was many times greater than what Ruin had before. Seeing the size of his fireball, the guy realized something. The power of the artifact was given to him as a unique chance. Since magic has a basic triggering principle, it takes an average of 10 seconds to release. But being able to skip this step and create a fireball through your inner strength is definitely an artifact power. And now Ruin could very well feel this power filling his entire body. While the guy was figuring out how his new artifact worked, the system window reappeared in front of his face. Passive skill mage madness is a method of sorcery developed by a mage, Draka, who had problems with releasing mana. The wielder of this skill can attack enemies by filling his body with magic. Also, he is not affected by the magic created by him. To the magic attack is added to the index of physical strength. Damage from magic will additionally cause physical damage. It was possible that this Draka suffered from a similar disorder as Ruin and fought by filling his fists and feet with magic. After realizing this, Ruin couldn't understand how the hell this person came up with such a method. The boy's musings were interrupted by a new task that had suddenly appeared. In this task, the system decided to show the guy his new abilities. To do this, he must use the power circle and physical strength to defeat a tangible target. As a reward for the mission, he will get 10 points to his strength attribute. In fact, Ruin hadn't even thought about this method yet. The first thing that came to his mind after he lost his mana circles was that now he wouldn't be able to cast magic and would be expelled from the academy very soon. But if with a passive madness mage skill, a guy has a chance to become a real mage, he owes it to himself to try it out. Running up to one of the targets located on the training ground, the boy activated a fireball and struck the target with his fist as hard as he could. This method actually worked because after Ruin's strike, the target shattered into splinters. The task was completed, as a consequence of which the guy was rewarded with 10 points to the attribute of strength. Not believing that he had actually succeeded, the boy lay back down on the ground in relief. Ruin managed to do what he had failed to do all those long years at the academy. It used to be that every failure was at the discharge stage, but the guy finally got over it. One must be a truly brilliant person to come up with such a method. Who was this Draka, really? Ruin really wanted to find out right now, but suddenly the boy felt his body grow heavy. What? He fell asleep right here? Looks like he practiced until dawn. But really, how could he fall asleep right on the training ground? He's not dead, is he? Although, on the other hand, even a lightning bolt couldn't take him. Hearing voices through his sleep, Ruin opened his eyes, trying to figure out why it was so noisy. Seeing that this guy woke up, the students surrounding him were surprised that he was still alive. When his classmates asked him not to scare them like that again, Ruin rose to his feet and yawned, asking why they were all crowded together. Was this the first time they'd seen a man sleeping in the street? Then, one of the students pointed out that it wasn't a common sight. If he was still homeless or a commoner, but a nobleman willing to trade the comforts of a nice dormitory for sleeping outside wasn't something you'd see every day. Maybe this guy had a drink last night. Heading indifferently towards the dormitory, Ruin asked his classmate not to say anything stupid. He was just exhausted, and so he fell asleep on the spot. As one of the academy students looked at the boy, puzzled, he noticed that Ruin seemed to have changed somehow. The student then noticed some debris lying nearby. Who would leave scraps of stuffed animal? Could it have been that guy? Oh no, that can't be right. A short time later, the academy dormitory. Brushing his teeth, the blonde boy heard the door to his room open. He looked up to see Ruin on the doorstep. This student's name is Jason Damon, and he is a sixth-year student at Ignite Academy. The eldest son of the Damon family, known for casting and mining metals, treats Ruin, a general pariah, at least not hostily. He's a psycho, though, obsessed with alcohol and girls, which is why he's always sneaking out of the academy. Even now, the first thing that came to his mind was that his roommate had been partying with girls all night because he didn't usually hang around. In response, Ruin asked his friend to stop talking nonsense. Then, throwing his clothes at him, the guy headed for the bathroom. Closing the door behind him, Ruin climbed into the bathroom and finally relaxed. Then, remembering that he had some other extra task to do, the boy called up a system window, the body workout repetitive task. 
This is the same task that the guy did last night on the training ground. The awards remain the same, but the number of reps doubled. From the looks of it, it will continue to double in size. As you might expect, pumping will not be easy. Pensive, Ruin went completely underwater, concurrently deciding to continue doing tasks as long as they would aid him in his becoming a mage. A month has passed since then. A repetitive task could be completed once a day. But in contrast to the unchanging reward, the number of repetitions required increased from day to day. If you fail to complete a task during the day, all progress is reset. That was why Ruin didn't miss a single day of training. Probably the only upside is that the performance requirements don't rise above 3,000 reps. Otherwise, the guy could have just died in the process of training due to overexertion. For the past month, Ruin had been going through this training every day and had even gained a new skill, the passive skill body art. Thanks to this, the guy has increased the abilities of his body. Also, stronger and more skillful movements are now available depending on the level of training. After another sleepless night, Ruin had to go to class at the academy as usual. The boy's classmates have long noticed that he has been acting strangely lately. He used to keep his eyes on the blackboard, but now he just takes a nap in class. What's more, this kid has actually moved into the practice field. Hard to believe it, but he's practicing kicks there. Although, on the other hand, Ruin has always been weird. He's probably trying to compensate for his disorder in some way this way, though it hardly works. Aside from training, Ruin Ardell had been doing something else for the past month. The boy was diligent in completing his assignment, and with that he was looking for any clues about Drac's identity. Unfortunately, he had never been able to find any mages by that name in historical summaries. The same goes for the World Destroyer, the player, the status window, and the quests. The nature of none of this the boy never understood even close. Who is he really, this Draca? Who is the man who gave power to Ruin? Thinking about it, the guy opened the status window and saw that his strength score had already reached 470 points. At the same moment someone called out to the boy, Ruin asked a worried Jason what had happened, to which he questioned his friend if he had heard what had happened. Though, if he already knew that, he wouldn't be standing so still here counting books. Asking his roommate to get to the point, Ruin wondered if something serious had happened. That's when Jason told him that the head of the Ardell family had come to the academy. Ruin's father is already here and waiting for his son to talk to him. Just after hearing this news, the boy ran to meet his father. Meanwhile, while talking to Professor Heidel, Lord Ardell heard someone call out to him. Seeing his son running towards him, the father was overjoyed at their first meeting in years. Left alone with his father, Ruin remembered that he had entered this place when he turned ten. It had been six years since that day, and this was the first time they had seen their father, and so the boy wondered how he and his mother had chewed up all that time. When the man replied that everything was fine, as always, the boy asked how his younger sister Luna was doing. Lord Ardell, in turn, told him that she has become quite an adult and is now studying the art of wielding a sword. She cites her goal as wanting to protect her weak older brother. However, this girl has always been known for her self-confidence. Scratching the back of his head awkwardly, Ruin lowered his gaze and turned to his father. Looking at him confidently, the guy said he was fine. And when Lord Ardell asked his son what he meant, the boy explained that he was really fine. He is not being abused physically or mentally. After listening to his son, the father hesitated and sipped some tea. Placing the cup on the table, Lord Ardell explained to the boy that he had actually come to find out if Ruin would like to leave the academy. If a guy is having a hard time, the doors of home are always open to him. Hasn't he experienced too many hardships and things he can't talk about? To be frank, Ruin realized from the beginning why his father had come to the academy after six years. But after asking his father to listen to him carefully, the lad decided to offer him a deal on something. In the next practice test, Ruin is obligated to perform well. However, if he fails, he will do as Lord Ardell wishes. When Ruin promised to get good results in the practical exam, his father realized his determination and returned to the manor after their conversation. And then came the long-awaited day of the exam. First of all, the students of the academy had to pass a written test on their understanding of magic. After warning the students that any infraction would be punishable by a zeroed score, the professor allowed them to proceed. The exam is divided into written and practical parts. The practical part, in turn, is divided into four more. Target shooting, changing magic power, real combat, and one-on-one -on -one combat. As the owner of a magic release disorder, Ruin had passed the written part perfectly throughout his entire training period. In the practical part, the first place was always taken by Michael from the reputable Gary Hill family. This time, however, things will be different. 
This year, Ruben Ardell is going to take first place in all the norms of the exam and personally overtake Mikkel Garyhill. After completing the written part and after a few days of preparation, it was time for the actual practical exam. While waiting for the next part of the exam, Ruin heard someone call out to him. As he approached his friend, Jason Damon noticed that he'd been acting strangely lately. Did this guy really have some kind of plan of action for the practical part? In response to this, Ruin said that he had actually thought of something. Today, he is trying a new approach. Ruin, what are you doing here? A haughty voice interrupted the conversation between the two friends. Looking down at the boy, Mikkel wondered if he was going to take part in the exam. With his mana release disorder, it was useless. With a smirk, Ruin confirmed that he had indeed come to take the exam. What's the big deal? Laughing, Mikkel walked over to the guy, put a hand on his shoulder, and as an honorable student, decided to give a little advice to someone who had already failed the practical part six times. Instead of going out and subjecting himself to humiliation, why doesn't he just give up? With a confident look at his best student, Ruin gauged that it was unlikely that this advice would be of any use to him this year. Without removing his hand from the boy's shoulder, Mikkel explained that he seemed to have misunderstood something. A person with magic release disorder wouldn't be able to pass the exam properly. In fact, the top apprentice was furious that this loser was suddenly acting so bold. That was why he had promised Ruin to deal with him in a one-on-one -on -one fight. The first part of the practical examination is target shooting. Officially, this stage is called multiple target shooting exam. Its purpose is simple, to find out how many targets the future magician can hit at a time. However, this year, the difficulty level of the exam has been increased, so now the targets are constantly moving. In this regard, the average was just awful. Many students hit just one target, and sometimes they couldn't even hit once, and only a few managed to hit three or four targets. Professors had no idea that the results would drop so much because of a minor complication. The quality of current graduates leaves much to be desired. However, some of the teachers thought otherwise. Professors should not be disappointed before their time. Easing into his co-workers, Alec, a potions professor, and Mikkel Garahill's uncle, reminded them that it was just about time for his nephew's turn. This guy is markedly different from his peers in his level of magic control and its concentrated power. Stepping onto the examination platform, Mikkel mentally advised Ruin to watch his performance carefully. He doesn't know what that brat is up to, but today he will definitely behold the true power of the Academy's best disciple. The difference between the two is colossal, and Mikkel will show this upstart what magic is all about. Releasing mana towards the target, the blonde easily hit most of the targets with literally one shot. Seeing how great this guy was at controlling mana, the students watching the exam were not surprised at the professionalism of the top student. As expected, he would once again become the first. Jumping up from his seat, Alec began to applaud his nephew, remarking that he was a worthy successor to the Garahill family. Michael is the pride of Ignite Academy, and as such, he is sure to be this year's representative at the big festival. Nodding, the old man sitting next to Alec asked the professor not to continue. The student's performance today was enough to assess the level of the current graduates. This older man's name is Tyrion Ignite, and he is the current head of the academy and a seventh grade archmage. Realizing that the archmage was about to leave, Heidel suggested that he sit here for a while longer and watch Ruin's performance. When he realized that it was Ruin Ardell, Tyrion was surprised that he was still attending the academy. In that case, the academy head decided to pay tribute to this kid's persistence and watch his performance. Stepping onto the examination ground, Ruin realized that this was the perfect opportunity to test his strength. At the same time, the examiner asked the student to begin. Taking a step forward, Ruin brought his hand to his chest and activated the fireball. The very next second, several more fireballs of rather large size appeared around the guy. This turn of events has greatly amazed all the professors and students. What the hell? How did that kid get such a ridiculously fast summoning speed? And how many things did he summon at once? Michael turned back to his classmates and with a smirk on his face, reminded the others that Ruin had a magic release disorder. If he could conjure up a hundred orbs, he'd have to hit at least one target, and he couldn't do that. The bastard is basically incapable of doing anything. As soon as Mikkel said that, everyone saw something amazing. Ruin abruptly snapped out of his seat and activated his new ability. More recently, the boy has gained the time refraction skill, which distorts and refracts time for 30 seconds. This skill adds an acceleration to the wearer's movements, equal to 200% of physical strength. This allows Ruin to move abnormally fast for a period of time in any desired direction. 
In other words, he is like a typhoon right now. The guy had literally one second to complete the first practical part of the exam. When the incredible magic power stopped raging, the professors and students looked at Ruin Ardell in shock. In the end, as Ruin expected, the exam was too easy. The guy ended up destroying 27 targets. The most amazing thing was that he summoned the magic in his hands and hit the targets himself. Moreover, 27 targets hit was the highest result in the Academy's history. How was he even able to move so fast? Suddenly, applause was heard from the teacher's section. Standing up from his chair, Tyrion Ignite admiringly praised Ruin for his incredible performance. That's when the students of the Academy exploded with applause, chanting the name of the new record holder. Meikle, who was also watching the exam, couldn't believe his eyes. How did this scum manage to hit so many targets in such a short time? General applause and acclaim that Ruin had not received once in those six years. They're warm in this guy's chest? Yeah, he's always wanted to feel that. Already some time after the second part of the exam, Alec had explained to the professor's council that, first of all, Ruin had hit the targets by applying magic on his hands. Could it be said that this technique had anything to do with magic? No one had ever heard of such an application. Objecting to his colleague, Heidel reminded him that the hallmark of magic is its limitless possibilities. If everything happens as expected, it's no longer magic, it's math. And when Alec wanted to say something against it again, the head of the academy interrupted him by waving his hand. Today, Tyrion Ignite beheld a miracle created by an apprentice. A flawless, magical miracle. However, one could not help but notice that most professors had a different point of view. With a displeased tisk tisk, Alec realized that everything could go down because of this ruin. Who would have thought it would turn out like this? Running up to his friend, Jason hugged him happily and jokingly congratulated the future archmage on passing the exam. As Ruin walked down the corridor, other students ran up to him and congratulated him for passing the exam perfectly. They were most excited about the trick of instantly recreating fireballs and how fast their classmate was moving. Ruin had been an outcast until yesterday, but that had changed overnight, so he was still having trouble adjusting to the attention. In fact, it would be better for the boy to continue to be alone. Of course, some people found it to be a bone in their throat. Entering his room, Ruin saw a familiar blonde man standing by the window. With a perplexed look at Michael, the boy wondered what he was doing in someone else's room. As he made his way over to the boy, the top student noticed that he seemed proud of himself for scoring some points with what couldn't even be called magic. His insolence pissed Mikkel off, so he decided to warn Ruin not to show off. Ruin asked him if it wasn't the embarrassment of losing to someone he'd looked down on for six years. That statement made the blonde man very angry, and he ran up to the boy and grabbed him by the shirt, asking him what he had just yelled. But Ruin only took Mikkel's hand and squeezed it tightly. Pulling the blonde's hand away from his shirt, the guy squeezed it even tighter to show the bastard his new place. Tensely staring at his palm, the best student couldn't understand where this boy got such power from. Meanwhile, moving closer to Michael, Ruin reminded him that it was important for them both to graduate. If the blonde was so eager to crush him, he could do it fairly in a one-on-one -on -one fight, as promised. Releasing his hand from the tight grip, the top student shouted that this scum was not worthy of competing with him. What does a man who has only failed all six years even think of himself? With a disdainful look at the blonde, Ruin explained that they would just have to wait a little longer. Then they'd find out what was best. As they approached the exit of the room, Mikkel turned around to the guy and told him not to even think about failing until the last stage. Already walking down the hallway, the blonde was sure that this cocky son of a bitch would definitely fail at today's stage, not even making it to the one-on-one -on -one fights. After thinking it over, he took out the hand that Ruin had recently squeezed with great force from his pocket. Looking at the still-trembling palm, Mikkel couldn't believe that this bastard was definitely a mage. Here comes the next day, the day of the second phase of the exam. The second stage of the practical exam, measuring magical power, a treasure of the academy, and a rare artifact of which there are only a few on the entire continent, the ancient ogre Kingrim. Five hundred years ago, Archmage Floyd turned the Ogre Kingrim into an artifact during his lifetime. Kingrim, trapped in the artifact, absorbs mage's mana and is a magical punching bag. The second phase requires students to channel magic into Kingrim and get a high score. This means just targeting the statue and using the spells you are most confident in. But this ogre is famous for being a very tough judge. To get a score above 20 from him is already considered something praiseworthy. 
the first contestant had already approached the statue and used his most powerful magic on it in a thunderstorm. However, the ogre only told the student to get out of his sight. He doesn't want to see a one-pointed mage. In fact, he'd better think about quitting magic right now. Hearing such a verdict, the academy student couldn't believe that he actually had such a low grade. The others also thought that this guy had done well. However, as expected, it wasn't that simple. After laughing at this loser, his classmate went next to take the exam. As she approached the statue, the girl advised the others to watch more closely for how magic should be used. Taking aim at Kingram, she fired an ice ball at him. After thinking for a bit, the ogre said that he would definitely remember this girl. He was really impressed with her result. Yes, he was impressed with how hopeless this student was. She's only worthy of two points. Trying to hold back tears, the girl screamed that this couldn't be happening. She, on the other hand, used her best attack. In this way, one student after another passed Kingram's test. He gave them all an average of five points, and even asked one of them if he had diluted his weak magic with water. And when one of the students shouted that he had used 100% mana, the professor watching the exam asked him not to make a scene and to return to his seat. The next person to take the test was Mikkel Garyhill. Standing in front of the statue, the blonde man unleashed his most powerful magic into it, as everyone else did. Continuing to stand nonchalantly, the ogre gladly took the blow for himself. Garyhill, I'm disappointed. You wouldn't happen to be George Garyhill's son, would you? Kingram inquired, looking at the boy. After confirming this, the blonde told the ogre that he was indeed Lord Garyhill's proud third son, Michael. But the statue only laughed at the word proud. In reality, Mikkel's father would have been a common goon begging for more points. His son, on the other hand, had even less talent. In the end, Mikkel only received 27 points. This, of course, infuriated the Academy's top student. Asking the boy to settle down, the exam overseer invited Ruin Ardell over. Heading towards the statue, Ruin felt a little nervous. Be that as it may, he has no other choice. And so, clenching his fist, the guy decided to pass this exam by all means. Approaching the statue, the boy introduced himself as Ruin Ardell. Looking puzzled at the guy, the ogre said it was the first time he'd seen him. It wasn't a big deal, though, and so Kingram asked the student to proceed to take the test. At the same moment, everyone around saw Ruin using explosive burning mana. How is that possible? This is fourth grade magic. How could an ordinary student use something like this? Even Ogre Kingram was surprised at the boy's approach. The statue was most perplexed by the student's stance. Meanwhile, Ruin warned the ogre that he was coming. Abruptly, the guy jumped into the air and brought his mana-filled hand behind his back. Suddenly, the boy poured all of his mana into his leg and struck the statue with a swing. That's when the rest of the academy realized that this was far from fourth-class magic. A spell this powerful should be at least fifth-class. Then, it's safe to say this guy is at least a fifth-grade magician. Upon landing, Ruin was surprised that his spell had worked properly. Except that Kingram's reaction to this is kind of weird. Did something go wrong? You, who are you? The statue suddenly asked, looking at the boy in surprise. Yeah, I recognized you almost immediately. You're Draka, aren't you? I've been waiting for you, Drac. Such words from the statue threw all the students in the academy into a state of bewilderment. Which Draka is he talking about? Could it be that the ogre had mistaken this guy for someone else? In the past two months, Ruin had read every book available, but he couldn't find a single mention of Draka but Kingram has some information. When the boy asked the statue if he was familiar with Draca, the ogre immediately confirmed it. In that case, the boy asked Kingram to tell him more about the man. However, the ogre only replied that what was happening here was incredibly curious. Who would have thought he would meet the incarnation of Drac here at the academy? After a bit of silence, the statue asked the boy to say his name again. The boy said again that his name was Ruin Ardell. Then saying he understood, Kingram promised to remember the name. At the same time, the ogre was approached by the professor, asking him to name Ruin's ball before he left. Shifting his gaze to the exam watcher, Kingram told the boy standing in front of him that there were too many extra ears here, and so he would talk about Draka a little later. After that, the ogre said that the evaluation was over. This guy's magic is not something Kingram can evaluate. Objecting to the statue, the professor reminded him that according to the rules, Mr. Kingram must grade students no matter what. This contract must be honored for 5,000 years from the death of Archmage Freud Ignite. Screaming at the professor to shut up, the ogre wondered if he dared mention the rules in the presence of Kingram himself. 
The statue had been evaluating children who didn't even look like mages for years. That damn Ignite can go to hell, but a contract is a contract, and so the ogre is going to have to evaluate this student. Zero or 100 points? How many do you want to get, young destroyer? Kingram inquired, looking at Ruin. And of course the boy couldn't give up 100 points on the exam. The rumor that Kingram had rated a student 100 points had spread through the academy in a matter of seconds. Moreover, the ogre had given such a grade to the loser of the century, Ruin Ardell. As he approached his student, Professor Heidel took stock of the fact that he was once again at the epicenter of events. The news that Ruin had gotten 100 points from Kingram had already reached the head of the academy. Upon hearing this, Tyrion Ignite said that this was an unprecedented case and that a student who achieved such a success deserved to be rewarded. That's why Heidel came to this guy and handed him some kind of scroll. Unfolding the note, Ruin saw an invitation to the artifact room. But what on earth was it? This was the first time he had heard of such a thing. Turning around, the professor waved his hand and motioned for the boy to follow him. It turned out that Ignite Academy always had a secret door leading to an unknown room. As they walked down the stairs, Ruin told his teacher that he hadn't realized such a place existed. Heidel explained that it was not surprising, since it was the only place in the academy that was off-limits. But if this is the only place that's off-limits, then why was Ruin brought here? As they approached the huge door, the professor told the student that they were standing at the entrance to the artifact room. Heidel himself was only allowed to go as far as here, and even he was forbidden to go any further. That means Ruin Ardell has to go in there alone. The guy has no idea what's going on, but since it's his reward, he should go in and watch anyway. Entering the artifact room, the boy saw a huge room with several display cases and someone's dark silhouette could be seen in the distance. Looking around, Ruin saw a great many items he had never heard of before. Most likely, this was the Archmage Freud Ignite's magic storehouse. You look lost. Suddenly heard someone's gruff voice. Sitting on the throne, Kingram noticed that the kid looked like he didn't realize his true worth. Seeing the huge ogre, Ruin was surprised that he was no longer a stone statue. Noticing the boy's surprised face, Kingram explained that this was the only place where he was allowed to appear in his true form. Thanks to the ancient mana filling the room, the ogre could be in his own body, not in the form of an artifact. Saying that he understood that, Ruin Poyne asked Kingram what he meant by his true worth. Kingram, however, replied that he meant exactly what he said. That boy doesn't realize his own importance at all. This is even though he uses the same artifact as the player. By the way, the ogre wondered where the guy got this one-of-a-kind rare artifact. And what was his connection to Draka anyway? However, even Ruin himself is asking these questions. Who is this Draka? Hearing such a question, Kingram looked at the boy thoughtfully. Afterward, he revealed that Draka was a being who wished to become a god. One day, he came to the Heaven Peak tribe to which Kingram himself belonged. This man was low and small, which looked unsightly. But his power was so monstrous that none of the tribe could resist it. Moreover, he grew stronger day by day, so that even a few ogres could not defeat him. The ogres respected Drac, and he in turn lived with them and was a recognized member of their tribe. This man had been teaching Kingram, the next leader of the tribe, language and magic for practically a hundred years. Such a statement surprised Ruin. How could a person live for a whole hundred years? In response, Kingram explained to the boy that it was because Draca wasn't human. His true form was the black dragon Rakagonia. In fact, Ruin didn't know that dragons really existed. Of course, the boy had heard that magic came from dragons, but until now he had thought it was just a tale. He thought it was just a legend. However, even though magic did originate from dragons, Draca wasn't capable of using it. That's why he had to create a way to fight the way Ruin does, infusing magic into his hands and feet. That's when Ruin realized that he and Draca were really similar. They probably had the same reasons for using magic in this way. Draca created an ability that only he himself could use. The ability to turn magic into power, which was demonstrated to Kingram Ruin by Ardell Ardell. With this power, Draca became the strongest being in the world. He was not satisfied with this, however, and endlessly built up his strength until he eventually destroyed everything around him and himself. It's not hard to guess why this man is called the Destroyer of Worlds. It is impossible to imagine how powerful he was to destroy the whole world. While thinking about it, Ruin saw a status window in front of him, informing him that he had received a new achievement. After finding the first traces of Drac, he was rewarded with the title of Friend of the Ogre, the Ogre Rage Skill, and the spirit Embodiment of Strand's Power.
The ogre friend title increases the likelihood that ogres will not show hostility to the holder. In addition, the effect of this title allows you to communicate with ogres. Looking at the system window, Ruin was glad to receive such a sudden reward. The most interesting of all the rewards was the active ogre rage skill, which lends the owner the power of an enraged ogre and gives a temporary increase in strength. Strength increases by 300 points for 30 minutes, and plus, the effect is greatly enhanced by the body art skill. The reinforcing skill would definitely not hinder the guy in his later battles. On top of all this, the boy was given some embodiment of power, Stran. This thing suddenly appeared in his hand, which begs the question. As Kingram rose from his throne, he noticed that apparently Ruin had been rewarded for the task. Draka also had a habit of babbling about such things while staring into the void. Handing the ogre an incomprehensible balloon, the boy asked if he knew what it was in that case. Deciding to take a closer look at her, Kingram immediately realized it was Stran. And when the boy asked if the ogre knew anything about the object, he replied that it was not just an object, but an incarnation. He was always around Draka, so Kingram couldn't help but recognize him. Given the current state of this incarnation, Draka must have sealed it in the Spirit Stone when he died. He is the embodiment of power. Although he is called a spirit, he is different from ordinary spirits. Stran has a nasty temper and asks Drake for infinite power every day. However, if you grant his wish, he will also promise you infinite powers. Simply put, the incarnation will be born out of this stone. By the way, don't worry about waiting too long. In all likelihood, Stran will awaken very soon. In the same second, the balloon broke and the incarnation of Stran's spirit emerged from it. Ruin looked a little closer and saw a small bear cub in his hands. Wiping his eyes after a long sleep, the spirit asked the lad who it was he called a bear. Such words surprised Ruin even more. How can a bear talk? Hey, you! Stop calling me that, you bastard! Strand shouted in rage, pointing a finger at the boy. But even after this sudden outcry, Ruin still couldn't understand how the bear could speak. Asking this dude if he was deaf, the angry spirit wailed that he dare not compare him to this animal. Strand is actually an incarnation that is not bound to form. He can be anything he wants to be. And now the spirit is going to show this arrogant guy all its power. Looking at the bear cub with interest, Ruin waited to see what was about to happen. However, Stran remained standing still, unable to do anything. Realizing that he would not be able to transform, the spirit screamed in panic that all his power was gone. I guess the problem was that he reincarnated with an empty stomach. With an angry glance at the boy, the bear ordered him to give him food sooner, rather than later. Unfortunately, Ruin explained to the spirit that there is no food here. Besides, he had no idea what little bears could eat. This kind of answer clearly did not please Stran. Was his current master so weak that he wasn't even capable of feeding him? Stran went to sleep, asking his master to wake him when it was time to eat. Ruin could not understand what was going on. This bear called him his master, and yet he was weak. What was that supposed to mean? Grinning, Kingram noticed that even after thousands of years, Stran's character hadn't changed a bit. At the sight of Ruin with his new handmaiden spirit, O. Lode immediately brought back memories of the good old days. These two remind him of Stran and Drak, whom he encountered in his homeland, the Celestial Peak Tribe. Sitting back on his throne, the ogre asked Ruin Ardell, the young destroyer carrying the will of Drak, what he would do next. How is he going to use the power that makes him stronger? It can make him righteous, or it can eat him alive. What's this guy going to do when he gets stronger? The reason Ruin craved power was because he wanted to protect humans from demons. Also, the boy wanted to elevate the Ardell family name and make himself known to those who despised him. Yeah, that'll be enough for now. The guy's got a lot to protect, so he won't turn down this opportunity. Therefore, Ruin will live of his own free will for the sake of his men, his family, and himself. Said to have pretty good wishes, Kingram promised to wait for the future he would bring. Even though Ruin had gotten a clue about Drax's identity from Kingram, his daily routine hadn't changed at all. But to tell the truth, there was one detail that was bothering the boy. As one might have realized earlier, the guy has developed his own handmade spirit, and now Ruin has to feed Strand forever. This kid is a food nut. He eats so much that it's hard to understand how it can all fit in him. The food in question is the power that Ruin gets from quests. That's right, Strand feeds on it. Strand, a one-star embodiment of power, is the only spirit of the physical world that responds to the most primitive manifestation of power. He grows stronger as Drax's vessel grows, sharing everything with him. This spirit challenged the seven rulers 
along with the black dragon Rakagonia, and was destroyed. After becoming the lucky owner of Stran, Ruin also commandeered the unique one-star skill. Thanks to this, the companion's growth is shared with the owner by 100%. Moreover, there is a companion skill that gives 100 points to the power attribute with each level. It's not hard to realize that this ability speeds up Ruin's development quite nicely. The kid gets an extra 100 points to his strength every time his hand spirit gets stronger. In addition, as it is later revealed, the boy will get as many as 200 points when Strand gets 2 stars, 300 when he gets 3, and so on ad infinitum. Before the ceiling, Strand had over 31 stars. That means that Drac had at least 3,100 strength. Even now, without even 1,000 strength, Ruin felt incredibly powerful. Determined to improve his skills by all means, the boy asked the spirit how Draca achieved this. Is there any way to build strength besides doing tasks? Laughing, the bear cub said that was why he was great. Even Draca wouldn't have accomplished anything without him. And if the boy wanted to know how to get even stronger, he would have to repay his companion with a glass of water. With a creepy look at Stran, Ruin gave him permission not to speak if he wanted to starve to death so badly. After hearing such an ironclad argument, the spirit told me that there were many ways to become stronger. For example, you can take on tasks of increased difficulty. The harder the task, the better the reward. Strength is also given when creating items or finding an artifact. You can also boil ogre tendon and make an elixir. But all of these options are definitely not for Ruin. And while there are so many ways to become the best version of himself, the boy has to gain at least a thousand strength to begin with. His body can't handle the power, growing exponentially. Right now, he's like a toddler just starting to walk. All this time, the guy thought he was getting stronger. It turns out he's just at the beginning of his journey. In that case, his next goal was to gain a thousand strength. Ruin Ardell trained every day to increase his physical strength. And when it reached the 930 mark, the third stage of the exam, the actual battle, began. The boy has waited a very long time for this day, and a trial by combat is clearly something he could use. Usually, mages attack while behind, so there is a chance that in the general chaos the spell could hit their own. This test is designed to test how much the mages are able to manage risks. This stage, one could say, is the most important of all. Unfortunately, Jason Damon completely failed the third stage of the practical exam by hitting the instructors with magic. Speaking of which, the Knights of Faldron have been invited to help with the exam. They would perfectly ensure the safety of the students and at the same time be able to check compatibility with them. The test lasted for 10 days, and depending on their scores, the students were given different monsters. At the end of the last day, 13 students with high scores were revealed. And since today is the last day of the challenge, everyone is wondering what kind of monster will show up in front of them. Seeing their first real opponent in front of them, the students were terrified. Today, a real orc will fight against them. Orcs live in groups and are common throughout the continent. They are much larger than humans and have comparable intellectual abilities. Orcs are brutal by nature so there are constant wars between them and humans. Therefore, the students couldn't figure out if it was exactly right to fight such a creature as part of the exam. What if someone died at its hands? Approaching the students, Professor Heidel told them to keep a sober mind. They must see this fight as real and give it their best. The examination began, and the orc immediately rushed into battle against the Faldron Knights. Of course, the experienced fighters were easily able to block his punch, and so it was time for Mikkel Garyhill to act. Standing up in a fighting stance, the blonde released an ice arrow at his opponent. But suddenly, the enemy snapped out of it, thus dodging the attack with no problem. The orc leapt high into the air and ignoring the Faldron knights attacked Mikkel. Realizing the danger of the situation, Heidel shouted to his disciple to rather dodge. However, Mikkel was so frightened that he couldn't even move. His body was shackled with fear. Then, raising his hand, Professor Heidel activated the tree prison. The green ropes bound the body of the huge orc in the same second, immobilizing it right in midair. Finding himself shackled in Heidel's magic, the opponent tried desperately to reach the frightened boy with his last strength. In the end, Mikkel Garahill failed the exam. Watching what was happening, an angry Elix slammed his fist on his knee. His nephew had failed again. Only this time, Ruin had nothing to do with it. Realizing that if Ruin passed the test, it could turn out disastrously for Michael, Elix asked the head of the academy if he really planned to continue like this. Looking at him, Tyrion Ignite asked the professor what this was implying. Alec in turn reminded him that it would soon be the turn of Ruin Ardell, the only student to receive the highest grade from Kingram. 
To grade him equally with other students would be unfair, wouldn't it? Fixing his beard, Tyrion said that he understood what the professor was getting at. However, the Academy is unprepared for other monsters. But Elec reminded them that they had something after all. When the Knights of Foldren brought the orcs, they brought someone else with them. That's right. A real ogre was brought in with them. It is very dangerous to use ogres in a test, but since Professor Heidel and the Knights of Faldron are present, there should be no problem. Absolutely everyone would very much like to see what Ruin Ardell is actually capable of. Pet the cat! <coughs>